but we are now bringing people in at a huge, like a rapid pace, and a lot of them have very fervent beliefs. Yes, and we don't necessarily know the backgrounds of many no. of these people. But here I am espousing concerns that 1,350 people arrived in the UK on small boats across three consecutive days of this week, yeah. of this week. And because I have concerns about that now, yeah. okay, um, people might call me a race baiter, they might call me racist, they can call me whatever false names they want to because neither of those aforementioned are true. But speaking as a former police officer, I firmly believe it is the government's primary job to keep its citizens safe. Yeah. And if you then allow people who you don't know the background of, you don't know what they're going to go, where they're going to go, you don't know what their intentions are, just to come unfettered into the UK and disperse, then I think that is hugely irresponsible as a government. If that government wants to call me racist for espousing those concerns over the safety of me, my family, and my fellow citizens of the UK, of every race, colour, creed, and sexuality, because I have those concerns on behalf of all of those people, if a stupid government or any politician wants to call me far right or racist, then you go ahead because you're incorrect, but what you actually are, for as long as you allow that to happen, you are grossly incompetent and hugely irresponsible. No, absolutely. I mean, well said. But what, what, do you, what would you say when they say... Uh, no, actually, no, you know what? Going back to your, what you're saying, um, it's, we need a new word. Because this idea of race is is just ridiculous. Because again, we've we've clarified that you, you don't you don't seem to see color. Color is a, is whatever. Uh, there's, there doesn't seem to be any issue. I haven't heard you mention, or, or I haven't mentioned Sikhism or Hinduism or anything like that. There seems to be an issue of one particular belief system, and we don't have blasphemy laws in this country. Or we, we, well, apparently, I said this to a friend of mine who's a lawyer, and they said they, they said we we do. So I need to check into that. Apparently, there are blasphemy laws in terms of you're not supposed to have a go at someone's religion in the workplace. No, there's this. There's, uh, there's <laughs> Hate crime laws, but is that a hate you know, crime to criticise Christianity, but, Judaism, or Islam in a, in a workplace? You can go to Speaker's Corner at Hyde Park, but you probably need to take a security team with you <laughs> to go criticise certain yeah. uh, faiths. Well, that's the but, issue. But you can be you, you you can. We do not, as it speak, have a criminal blasphemy is not a criminal offence. There are, of course, hate crimes around. You know, saying something. Or the workplace H or HR to someone yeah. HR might get rid of you because you've yeah. said something about someone's belief. Yeah. It, I mean, one one group of people who is particularly worried about immigrants is immigrants. I mean, immigrants come to this country first, second generation, and they're thinking, "Bloody hell, do we people are coming in a lot quicker than I thought?" You want to? There's that feeling of sort of wanting to close the door. Um, uh, that's always been the case as well. I mean, my great grandparents would have would, were immigrants, I think, <laughs> um, but but and they were often the most worried about more immigrants coming in because they know what it is and they know those concerns. I think you're absolutely right. It's a, it's I can see your anger and your passion because you're, you're being called something which, as I say, is is an, not just unattractive but an abhorrent thing to be called in today's age, and it's just utterly not true. What about? Um, you know, Tommy Robinson, he is now the bogeyman, isn't he? He's like Voldemort. I don't know if you know Harry Potter, but he's the Voldemort. He's the the bad guy. Uh, to what extent, I mean, is he really pulling the strings for huge far-right movements from his sun lounger in wherever he is? He has a large following on social media. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So clearly his words and his thoughts are consumed by a considerable number of people. Mm -hmm. um, he is a damaged brand, of course, because he has criminal convictions and that kind of stuff. But many people are now kind of looking at him as some kind of de facto freedom fighter for free speech and such like. Um, in a similar kind of way, 
that so many people look towards Nigel Farage and 4.1 million people voted for the Reform Party um, at the last general election. What I would really like to see, and, and I, I absolutely mean this from the bottom of my heart, is I would like to see less two-party politics, less deliberately sown division by politicians. And they deliberately sow division because they divide and conquer. And look what a two-party, first-past-the-post electoral system does in the UK. It merely perpetuates that. What I would love to see from somewhere is a nation builder. Hmm. Somebody who wants to build a nation. Somebody who does not have baggage, convictions, a backstory that can be ripped asunder. And you know, you know how the, the, the media, certain sections of the media do. But a real, true nation builder who loves the Muslim man who runs the curry house yeah. as much as he loves the Ugandan Asian who got booted out by Idi Amin and has run the local news agent for the last 45 years, as much as he loves the French guy that runs that wonderful bistro down the road, as much as he loves his Jewish friend mm. who... I don't know, he goes on a podcast with, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. You were worried about saying a stereotype for the Jewish friend. And on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and on and on and on. Yeah. And a nation builder who so loves the nation that they will not allow unfettered immigration to continue. They will be courageous enough to stand up and say, actually, I want to protect the people of this great nation because it is still a wonderful nation, mm. but there are so many concerns that law-abiding, decent, tax-paying, right-minded people who raise brilliant kids have that is being shut down. There is so much division being sown there we are we are being drawn apart when i know that so many people for example that will go on a pro-palestine march i bet i could sit down with every single person from that march and have a very civil conversation where we express concerns about the state of our public services for example mm. our hospitals our education our roads our policing I bet we'd have so much in common, so much in common about all those kind of things.